welcome to the first video of 2024. The last video I made was way back in July last year. Um, I had been hoping to, to do another one um, before now and to do them more regularly, but it seems to have been quite a busy six months or so, um, just with various things going on. Um, we had things like the Tall Ships last year, Tall Ships event in Lerwick, um, where I had a stand selling yarn. And then in, in October, um, or the begin end of September, beginning of October, then it was Shetland Wool Week, um, and that always takes up a, a lot of time. Um, I had uh, my pop-up shop open more regularly last year as well, which I hope to do a bit more of again in this coming year. So if you're in Shetland, you can keep your eye out for that. Um, at the moment in Shetland, we're in the middle of a snowy spell. Um, all schools have been closed and have been closed for the last few days. Um, and it's really, it's really quite hard to get anywhere. So um, I'm not going to the post office at the moment, um, but uh, hopefully it's only going to last for a couple more days. Um, well, I'll actually show you outside what it looks like at the moment. So it's quite snowy. Um, the, when the winds get up, then the snow all blows around and then the, the, the roads get blocked. But it does look very beautiful. But I think this would be a good chance to actually go and feed the sheep. us back in. Um, quite cold out there so I took the chance to uh, make myself a cup of tea. So I've got my cup of tea here um, in one of my favourite mugs from Hildegard Pottery um, and uh, I've got the, the kettle on the Rayburn as well so, so it's good for keeping us all warm. So I just wanted to um, share a couple of the things that I finished last year. Um, the first one is the wearing jumper, which is one that I was knitting in the video that I made last July. Um, and uh, so I had it finished for a few months and uh, it's, I've worn it quite a lot since then. So this is the, the wearing jumper, um, which is in my book. The pattern for that is in my book, Lang Soon, um, A Shetland Yarn. Um, which is there, and this the, the wearing jumper <coughs> is at the back here. So that's the, the pattern there. Um, and I've done this in the colour Shetland Black um, with my, my Langston double knit yarn. Um, I made the size 3, which is the size larger than I'm wearing in the, the pattern there, um, just, for a, just to have a, something a little bit different. Um, and so, yeah, quite happy with that. Um, the other one I finished was the thatch cardigan. Um, so again, I was knitting this. Um, this one is by, the pattern is by Erica Knight. Um, and it's out of her book, Texture. Um, so it's the thatch pattern 
which is there. So I made it a little bit shorter than um, it's in the pattern and I was I was a bit worried it was going to be too short but it actually works really well especially when I'm wearing it with, with dresses um, or skirts. So again I've been wearing that quite a lot, it's quite, it's quite cosy, um, it's all garter stitch so that tends to kind of keep the trap the heat air a bit better and uh, it's it's really cosy to wear. Um, I like the the things the the details such as the contrast and cuffs and I either wear them down like that. I've got quite long arms so I tend to wear them down quite a lot or you can fold them back um, and have it so it just just adds a little bit of interest to the to the design and also you've got this contrast and pockets. Uh, in here, so you knit at the pockets first, so just little little garter squares, garter stitch squares, and then they're added into the design as you knit, um, and then it's just finished with the the murat, um as well. So this um, was Shetland black, and the contrast was murat. Um, so yeah, so I was really pleased with that, uh, and I'll just add in a video there um, of me uh, when I. I blocked it or dressed it as we say in Shetland. So I, I dressed it on a jumper board, which is a wooden frame, um, which is traditionally used in dressing or blocking Shetland knitwear. Um, and th this one was made by my granddad. Um, and it's actually one that can be, um, it's, it's, uh, could be made various sizes. So sometimes you get them and they're only one size. So you have to have lots of different ones. But this one I can make various sizes and this this really useful for blocking Shetland yarn. So that's two finished objects. Um, and now if we have a look at some of the things I'm working on at the moment. <clears throat> I'm working on quite a few things at the moment. And I think sometimes when I gather them together, I, I get a bit of a shock to see how many things is actually on the needles. Um, I'm certainly not a, a person that can work on one thing at a time. I, I need to have various things happening or be working on various things at the same time. It depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm in the mood for just quite simple knitting. Sometimes in the mood for something a little bit more complicated. Um, and I sometimes just need to cast on something. And I think if you're a knitter, you probably quite understand what I'm speaking about here. Um, one of the, the things I'm working on that's nearly finished is this cardigan um, and this again has been knitted in my um, Langsund DK yarn. Um, I've knitted in uh, Colourway Wave and I think I've got one of the skeins here. So it's sort of a bluey grey colour and it's dyed with rhubarb leaves and logwood um, and it, and it kind of gives a really interesting um, not quite flat colour so there's a little bit of variation in there and there are, there are a few skeins of that in my um, online shop at the moment so um, this pattern was sort of a mashup of the two cardigan patterns that's in my book the Blanksund yarn um, one of them being the wearing cardigan, which is the cardigan version of this jumper, and the other one being the scarpy guard cardigan. And the difference between those two cardigans is really in the body. Um, so the wearing cardigan, you can either do with a straight body or a slightly shaped, um, or a, a body with slight gentle waist shaping. Um, the scarpy guard cardigan is fitted. So you, you cast on less stitches and then you increase to give a sort of fitted shape and it's shorter as well. So what I did with this cardigan, I wanted a short but more boxy cardigan. So I took the number of stitches for the wearing cardigan and I've done the length of the scarpy cardigan so that that can tell me the number of stitches for um, the, uh, sorry, the dog is barking. Um, the number of stitches for the, the buttonholes uh, and the button bands. Uh, so yeah, so I'm nearly finished that. Um, I'm just on the, the buttonhole band there. So I've just picked that up and knitted the buttonholes. 
and then all I need to do now is pick up the other side uh, where the buttons will be sewed onto and then graft the underarms and then that's it basically and then that will be finished. So I'm looking forward to, to getting that um, dressed and see what that looks like when it's on. Here Sky points to my seat. So there's somebody came to the door, so she likes to tell me that um, that there's somebody at the door, doesn't she? There's no need to be. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, last year I got a new um, weight of yarn spun, a lace weight, and which I'm really pleased with. It's nice to have a different weight of yarn uh, to work with. And <clears throat> I... The first thing I did was cast on the edge of uh, the Huland Hap. I don't know if you'll see this very well. So, so basically, the edge is a it's a long strip of lace. So you cast on, I think it's seven stitches or something like that, and you can see the repeat. It's not that easy to see in this color, but you can see the repeat here. This is the brand. Iron edging, um, so you increase and then you decrease again to give you that peak shape. Um, so I've done quite a lot of the, the edging there, um, and then it's based. The design is based on the traditional haps in Shetland, um, which were usually square. They were usually knitted from the outside towards the inside. Um, so you started with this lace edging. And um, then you pick up stitches along the edge, the straight edge here, and then knit the hap towards the centre. Um, and this design, the Huland, was um, originally knitted for, or originally done for Kate Davies' Book of Haps uh, quite a few years ago now. And I took my inspiration for this design from my Aunt Emma, um, who's sadly no longer with us. But she's the one that uh, basically told me everything that I needed to know about knitting haps. She'd knitted probably hundreds in her in her lifetime, um, and this is one of the edges that she used. Um, the hula and hat pattern: you pick up the edges and then you knit towards the centre. It gives you a triangle, um, and it uses the what we call the tree pattern or the tree of life. Sometimes it's called. Uh, and that was a design or a, a motif that she really liked to use. Um, and I named the pattern Hulan because that's the name of the craft where she grew up with, with the rest of the family. So, so I'm working away on that. Um, this is some of the other lace colours that I've got in the shop at the moment. This one, this colour is called Maril. So I'll show you that in the ball. So that one is called Maril. And that's dyed with logwood. Um, just lay that down there. This one here is called Winter Gers, and Gers is a dialect name for grass, so it's just the Winter Gers, and that's dyed with fustic and indigo. Um, this one is Marsh Orchid, and that's dyed with. Um, black. This one is Speedwell, which again is dyed with lac, and that one is Hyacinth, which is dyed with logwood. And I just picked up a few of them just to show you. The, um, the spec for the yarn is 548 metres or 599 yards per 100 grams. So you, you get quite a lot out of one skein. Um, it's worsted spun as well, so it's it's almost got quite a nice silky feel to it. Um, whereas the, the double knit is woolen spun, so it's, it's more of a fluffy sort of yarn. This scarf is one that my uh, friend Nancy knitted up for me, um, just, to, just to basically to see how much we could get out of a skein. This is the Sanic shawl, um, which is one of my patterns. Um, it's got a cockle shell edging, as you can see there, and then it's got a garter stitch um, so at the centre, and it gives a really nice shape. It's not been blocked yet, that's something I need to do. One of my least favourite jobs, I think, is blocking 
um, but uh, that's something I maybe could be doing with this snowy weather while it's not really weather to do much else. Uh, this <clears throat> was knitted with wind skein, so you can see how much you can get out of, out of that. Uh, and that was really good that um, we can, you know, get something like that out of just one. Um, this colourway is, um, I think it was called Labrac, and it's using dyed using dock leaves and indigo. So it's not available at the moment because I'll have to wait for the summer or wait till the spring until some more dock leaves uh, grow. So, so thank you, Nancy, for knitting that for me. Um, then the next thing I'll show you is oh, this one here. So I've got, um, this is a hat that I'm still working on. So anybody that was here at Shetland Wool Week and they were at the, if you were at the opening ceremony, you will see that I haven't got very much further with this. We've got a, a rogue needle going in there, I need just to see. So this, um, this pattern was designed by Alison Rendell. It's called the Buggy Fluor Beanie. And um, if you're not familiar with Shetland Wool Week with the event, then what happens is every year there's a patron and the patron designs a hat pattern which um, is used sort of to promote the event and you can purchase the pattern so that's the pattern here for a small fee and then you can knit the hat before you come and come to Shetland wearing your hat and then people can see that you're here for Wool Week or if you're not able to come for Wool Week it's a really good way of supporting the event uh, and being part of it even though you're um, maybe not able to get here. Um, it's amazing how many different colourways people will, will uh, knit and it's amazing when you see them at the opening ceremony all together and uh, there's so many different variations. It's really, it's a really nice way to, you know, to be able to, you know, get people involved with with the event. So, but anyway, I decided to knit mine just in two colours because I thought, well, that's something colours that I would wear. Um, so this is Shetland Black and Murat. It's uh, knitted in jumper weight, which is sort of you would, I suppose, be classed as fingering. Wait, um, I'm not sure where it came from because it was just out to my stash, um, and I've got lots of lots of different yarns. Um, I've inherited a lot over the years from my mum and grannies and aunties, and um, so I I don't know where that came from. That this is an old one, and I can tell that because it's been wound on a winder, um, and nowadays all the the yarn that you buy are, are bought in balls. So this would have been but um, as a as a skein or a hank as we called it and then and then wound so that's so I know that's an old one but it's still a really good quality uh, and looks just just the same as what you would buy now um, I actually added in a couple of extra uh, patterns here just to give it a bit more depth I'm not too keen on wearing like a beanie shape for myself I prefer a slouchy hat so I'm hoping that works. Um, I just thought I would try it and see. And so I don't have much to do, not not far to finish. So I'll just have to sit down and it probably it would only take me an evening less than that to finish it. And then it's done. Um, sometimes these things I, I lay aside to start something else and then I forget to pick them up again. Um, I'm really liking these little stitch markers as well. I don't know if you can see them. These are by Emma Ball and these are part of her Kittens and Mittens range. And now that's another one the same. She's got a few different ones there. So they're very cute. Um, so very often I don't use stitch markers between repeats, but I found that with this pattern, it was just a bit easier to, so that I could follow what was going on. Um, you'll also see that I have two needles there and another needle there, which would be my working needle. And so what I'm working on is, is actually flat. Um, this is a traditional uh, way of knitting in Shetland. Um, so what we would tend to do, or if you're knitting the traditional way, is to use a knitting belt, which you put around your waist, and then the needle, let's just put it on like that, and then the working needle, or the, the bare needle, 
or wire as we call it in Shetland, goes into the belt and then you knit along like that. So that's the traditional way of knitting. And I thought it might be a, quite a nice idea for if I do another video, I can speak on a bit more about knitting belts and the history of them in Shetland and, and why we use them and things like that. So, so that's the buggy floor B. And hopefully by the next time we do the video, then I'll be finished. That's a good incentive for me to finish it. Um, what else do I have here? So I did tell you there was a few things on the needles. Um, I'm knitting a blanket as well. So I've got a few blanket squares here. So these squares are for the break blanket, which again is in my book, Lang Sund, um, Shetland Garden. Um, this is the original blanket here, which I have on the back of the chair. So that's the original blanket there. And again, my friend Nancy knitted it for me. She knitted the sample. Uh, so I was very grateful for her. So this one is done in two colours. So this was done in the sort of medium grey and the the undyed white kexi. And each square is knitted separately, starting from the outside and you go towards the inside. It uses the horseshoe motif, which is something that's really um, uh, traditionally used in, in Shetland lace knitwear. So that's the the original one. There's 24 squares in there, but you could you could make it smaller or, you know, I wondered about making it just a smaller one, which can lie over the back of the settee. I'll probably end up doing a full-sized one. Um, so I've got a few different colours here. So originally my idea was to use only um, yarn that has been dyed with plants that are found on the craft or that have been grown on the craft here because the, the blanket is called the break blanket and that's the name of the craft but I think just to have a bit more variety well I've done that already I'm going to um, use you know dyes that have have not been grown on the craft so just to show you this one is actually nettle so that one is come from the craft. Um, it's a bit more green than that. It's, it's kind of shown a bit lighter on the camera there. That's nettle. Um, this one here, again, the colour I really like, that's rhubarb leaves, which were grown on the craft and logwood, which wasn't grown here. Um, this one, again, rhubarb leaves and logwood, but the, the second bath, so it's a bit paler. Um, this one was just rhubarb leaves on its own, so it gives sort of a, just a creamy colour, a really nice neutral that goes with all the colours. And I think um, sometimes you find that a lot of the natural dyes, they all go together because I probably a lot of the pigments that are in the dyes are similar, so they tend to all sort of complement each other. So I've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six here. I've got six. I think I might have more <laughs> in, the, in my box and I'm not sure what colour I'm going to add to it next. But but I like to, these ones are quite um, nice to knit and I like to knit them sort of between projects. So that sometimes I have them on the go at, a, you know, one on the go at, a, at any time. I think I will need to cast one on. So I'll have to decide what colour I'm going to do. Um... This one here is socks. So I've got, I decided I was going to make a pair of socks. I've actually never knitted socks before. Um, and some of you might be gasping because I think people that um, knit, they assume that everybody knits socks. But I've never knitted socks before. I think probably because it's traditionally not something that we did in Shetland. Sky, come here. Come here. Go and sit down there. There we go. I think she's aware of people outside probably sledging and she wants to go as well. So, um, so yeah, so this uh, was a kit that I ordered from Kate Davies and it's for the, the pattern called, for the Elizabeth Carter socks. And so they're just plain, they're just a plain sock. Um, something that, you know, is very wearable. It's, uh, the yarn is from John Arburn. 
So it's the Exmoor sock for ply and this is colour uh, whortleberries. I think that's what it says. Yeah, so it's sort of a, a blue, bluish colour. Um, and I, I've really enjoyed knitting them. They've, I've actually taken them off the needles because I got a bit carried away and started just knitting and knitting and then I realised I'd gone far too far. So I just pulled the needles out. Um, so I'll have to pick them up and figure out where, how much I need to knit before I do the rib. Um, but I've really enjoyed knitting them. The, um, you start toe up, um, so you do sort of a, the, the, ink, the cast on that gives you the, um, the sort of the, the toe there and then you increase and then do your heel so it's really it was a really straightforward pattern to follow um so i need to get them finished so i've just done one that's just the one i've done so far and the yarn is ready for doing the other one so i'll have to get to that so again when i'm in the, when i'm in the mood for socks then i'll do that and i think the last thing that i've got to show you is a scarf so um, I've jumped on the bandwagon and nothing one of those little scarves. Um, lots of people have been doing the Sophie scarf from Petite Knits. Um, this one, I do have the pattern, but this one I got, um, it's called the Alex scarf um, by Knitting for Olive. And it's basically just, um, you start off, you start off with a, a point and you increase and then you knit for quite a while and then you do a decrease at the other side so it's one of those little scarves that you can tie around a few times and this yarn is yarn that i've had for a, quite a few years now um it's it's uh, by knit circus and i got it when i was in new york at vogue live knitting in i think it was february 2016 so it's way back then and i really liked the the yarn it's one of those um you know so it's it's like it's it's um the dye so it's a different color at the at the opposite end and i i've had had a few different things on the needles using this and then i've changed my mind and i'm still not 100 percent sure because i quite like to use the whole ball so that i'm you know getting this color as well and i think this is going to be really long so I'm going to just knit the way at it for a little while and see what I think. Um, and it might become something else yet. So, But it's certainly a really nice pattern to follow, really nice pattern and something that it's, it's very useful for sort of using those skeins that um, you don't really know what to do with and very wearable as well. So this, this yarn, I've lost the button band, the, the ball band. So I don't know, I can't remember what the actually was made out of it but it's very soft i think it'll make it will make a really nice scarf so i'll see how we get on with that um so yeah so that's that's um i think that was everything i was going to show you it is um and that's sort of what i'm working on at the moment or oh, certainly the things that i can show you i am working on a couple more projects which uh, will be turning into patterns um and lots of new ideas for this year um, I need to start getting into back into dyeing again. I had a bit of a break over Christmas, and um, so I need to get back into the dye studio and, and uh, sort of do a bit of cleaning and sort out things before I, I kind of can dye again properly. But hopefully that'll be in the next week or so, um, and then I should be able to get some yarn online again shortly. So thank you for joining me. Um, I we, I actually filmed a walk that we went on. Um, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, we went to the beach, which is just five minutes from the house, went to the beach and out along the coast. And it was just before the snow came, it was just starting to, to, to be a bit wintry. So I filmed a, a bit of a walk and thought you might like to see see it and uh, see some of the more around the place that I live. Um, so I hope you enjoy that and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.